chapter 16 of the story of Geronimo. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Sherry Ritchie. The story of Geronimo by Jim Kelgard. Chapter 16. Hunted like wolves. Geronimo galloped wildly through the black night. Naichi rode beside him. Ten of the eighteen warriors who remained with Geronimo followed. Geronimo turned his head. He saw light from the burning buildings of the Arizona ranch that he and his warriors had just raided, reflected in the sky. The Apaches had taken fresh horses, but the four men who had been at the ranch had fled after firing a few shots. Presently, Geronimo pulled in his horse to a trot. The rest slowed. Naichi drew in nearer to his chief. I wish that the white men had stayed to fight, he said. I too, said Geronimo, but the white men are not fools. They remain great liars. The last time I raided in Arizona with but six men and Caita deserted to return to San Carlos, but the white men said we had two hundred warriors. Loco, who remains on the reservation, sent me a message asking to know where we found such strength. Naichi asked anxiously, What was the whole message? There was no more, Geronimo said. Said Naichi, Then I am sad. My wife and children are in Arizona. My relatives are there. I am sorely in need of news of them. Why does Chihuahua send me no word? He returned to the reservation the second time Chief Grey Wolf came to us and asked us to come in. There is no knowing what happened to Chihuahua, Geronimo said. Chief Grey Wolf has gone from Arizona, and the Apaches will never see him again. General Crook had indeed made a second journey to Mexico, and again he met the runaway Apaches and tried to persuade them to come back to the reservation. Chihuahua and his followers had returned. Mangus and two or three others had fled deeper into Mexico, but Geronimo and Naichi had promised to return. At the last minute, they, with eighteen other men and nineteen women and children, had changed their minds and fled back in to the Sierra Madres. General Crook had been sharply rebuked by his commander for letting Geronimo escape, so he had asked to relieve of duty in Arizona and sent back to Texas. His wish was granted, and a general named Miles had come to Arizona to take his place. General Miles had 5,000 soldiers at his command, and their principal duty was to capture Geronimo. A large number of Mexican rallies and police were afield for the same purpose. Besides these, there were many ranchers, cowboys, miners, and townsmen who would gladly do anything they could to put an end to Geronimo and his followers. There were certainly at least 10,000 people actively plotting the downfall of this one Apache chief, and not all of them together had come near to succeeding. By special arrangement with Mexico, American troops were per permitted to range south of the border and there had been several fights between them and Geronimo's band. Some American soldiers had been killed or wounded, and the Mexicans had suffered too. But Geronimo had not lost a single warrior. Not one of his followers had even been wounded, yet the Apache chief was discouraged. He swayed in the saddle, and bright lights flashed before his eyes. He put a hand in front of his eyes to shut out the lights. Are you ill? Naichi asked in alarm. I am tired, said Geronimo. Naichi said, we may stop and rest. I speak not of body weariness, Geronimo said. My spirit is tired. I understand, said Naichi. We have fought for a very long while. We have been driven from our camps and our cooking fires. Seven times in fifteen months we lost all our horses and had to steal more. We know not when we will have to fight many soldiers. The spirits of all of us are tired, but we dare not surrender. We dare not, Geronimo agreed. Chief Grey Wolf is gone. Captain Crawford is dead. Lieutenant Gatewood is gone. There is not one white man among all who pursue us whom we may trust. Almost I wish I had gone in with Grey Wolf. I too, Naichi murmured. 
They halted at daylight in a rock-bound little canyon. Horses that had become both weary and thirsty stood with heads raised and nostrils flared. They smelled water, for there was a water hole ahead, but the warriors tied their mounts and waited. Carrying his Winchester repeating rifle, Geronimo slipped off alone. With no more fuss than a slinking coyote, he made his way among the boulders and the scrawny little trees that grew between them. After a bit, Geronimo stopped and cut a number of leafy twigs. He thrust them into his headband so that if he held very still, whoever saw him would think they saw a bush instead. Then he dropped to wriggle forward on his stomach. Presently he looked down into another canyon. The water hole was there, and the water was fresh and cold. Green grass surrounded it, great cottonwood trees bordered it, but a herd of horses browsed on the grass and pack mules stamped at a picket line. There were packs and tents, and there were more than twenty soldiers whose reason for being here was to keep Geronimo away from the water. Geronimo slipped away as quietly as he had come. Soldiers away, he told Naichi when he returned to his warriors. Many soldiers, Naichi asked. Too many for us to fight, Geronimo said. Naichi said, then we must go. No, we must lose our horses, said Geronimo. Naichi said, they will run to water. They will run to water, Geronimo agreed. Naichi asked wonderingly, you would give good horses to white soldiers? These horses are too spent to serve us any longer, Geronimo said. Let them go. Tie ropes were slipped. Following the smell of water, the horses were off at a gallop. Geronimo led his warriors forward. He stopped them just beneath the rim of the canyon in which the water hole lay. Again, he thrust bits of brush into his headband and crawled forward to look. The thirsty horses had come in and were crowding each other at the water hole. A young lieutenant was ordering his men to mount. A scout whom Geronimo had seen, but whose name he had never heard, was arguing with the lieutenant. Don't do it, the scout said. Don't do it, lieutenant. You say these horses were lost by Geronimo's men, the lieutenant asked. The scout said, couldn't have been nobody else in every horse. Where's the Pratt brand? Geronimo must have stole them there. I figure we'll find the Pratt ranch burned and maybe the Pratt brothers dead. But don't dash off in all directions this away. If Geronimo lost his horses, he and his men are afoot the young lieutenant exclaimed. The only horses Geronimo ever lost was them our scouts or soldiers took away from him, the scout said. He's turned these loose for some deviltry of his own. And did you ever try to hunt Apaches when they was afoot? No, the lieutenant admitted, but they you should be easy to catch. About as easy as so many quail with six entry wings, the scout said. You can't catch them. The lieutenant said sternly, Mount and come with us. All right, the scout said, but don't leave no horses here. I won't, but we must travel fast, so I'll leave the pack mules. Then leave a guard, too. I'll need every man, the lieutenant said. Suppose the Apaches come here, the scout asked. They won't, the lieutenant said. They're too cowardly. Geronimo and every last one of his men are running for Mexico. We must overtake them. Geronimo's the last Apache war chief. When he's captured or killed, it will mean an end to the Indian Wars here in the South Whiff. The least I'll get out of this is a captain's rating and perhaps even a major's. The scout said, if I'm asked, I'll say I told you t'was a fool thing to do. Say what you please, lieutenant said, I know what I'm doing. The soldiers followed the scout, who in turn followed the back trail of the horses. When they found the place where the horses had been loose, the lieutenant thought they would also find helpless Apaches on foot. When the soldiers were out of sight, Geronimo signaled his men forward. They drank at the water hole. Then they rummaged hastily through the packs and tents and took all the rifles and ammunition they could find. Minutes later, each warrior was mounted on a mule. Geronimo led them into rough and rocky ground where mules could travel, but horses could not. Long before the young lieutenant brought his men back to their camp, every Apache was safe. End of chapter 16, recorded by Sherry Ritchie.
Anderson, California.